Welcome back for part six of the 2008 Acura MDX cylinder head removal. I think I'm going to disconnect these two back here. Yep. And lift up. And there's that one. Okay, so there's a 12 millimeter right there. I'm going to take off. That connects the water hose uh, to this bracket. Okay. All right, let's see if that helped us at all. Looks like that gave us a little clearance to get in here. Put this back in so I don't lose it. That's a 12 too. There we go. Anyway. Okay. Okay, there it is. All right, so I'm gonna take these sensor wires off. So I'll just pinch right here and then slide this down. There we go, there's one. There we go. Wow. Okay, so those two are off. This bracket's off. Okay, so I am going to take this hose off, try to create a little bit of space because I wanna get this whole harness to come up over the cylinder head. We've got to take the cylinder head and the cat off at the same time. So we need all the space we can get. I'm going to disconnect this here. That's going to be easier, I think, than trying to connect, disconnect them from here. There we go. That broke free. A lot easier. That's no, not too bad. Alright, so I did hear some fluid coming out of this one. I'm just going to stuff it with some paper towels. I think that's good for now. Well, while I'm here, I guess I'm going to go after this hose also. Let's see here. Okay, should be able to pull it off the rest of the way now. I'm going to stuff that one with some paper towels too. Okay. Okay, so this one I think goes to the cat. Uh, I'm going to take, take that off this bracket. You can see it, hopefully you see it right there. There's a tab on this side. And then there's a tab on this side. And it should pop free, I think. You can see that, hopefully. Okay, there's that side. There we go. Okay, there's a vacuum hose right here. This goes right underneath that, so I'm going to take this vacuum hose off. There we go. So what I'm going to do now is take the bolt out here, 10 millimeters. So, got a connector right here too. It's like a million connectors on this thing. Okay, we'll take that off there. So that's going to the transmission it looks like. Take that off. All right, so in order to lift this up a little higher, I believe this thing's on a bracket right there. So I'm going to push the tab that way and lift up. There we go. There we go. It's a bit more. Okay, so I'm going to work on the water passage now. There are two nuts, one here and one here. And then right here where the ratchet is, there's a bolt right there. And those are all 12s, 12 millimeter. that one's loose. So this that bolt is right here. 
That's the first one. Then there's one right here. It's a nut, 12 millimeter. And then over here. Okay. There's that bolt right there. Okay, there is a nut underneath here also that I missed. That's a 12 millimeter. That is really hard to reach, by the way. So I'm probably gonna block your view a little bit. Oh, man. So, kind of right here where my finger is, right below this outlet, is where that other one is. There's a nut there. There it is. Right underneath here, there is a nut. I'm going to get that out real quick and then we'll come back. Alright, so it appears there are a lot more fasteners than I thought. So that I can see a nut right there. Nuts loose there, I'll spin it out. It's that one. And then this bolt back here, I think it's a bolt. I can't even see it. It's right under here somewhere. Get to that, I might have to take this this whole assembly off with this hose on so I can reach there. There's two brackets, there's one here, and then there's one over there. So I'm gonna take this one off, 10 millimeters. I think that might be enough to, yeah, that should be enough space right there. All right, so hopefully you can see the socket is right there. It's got the red stripe on it. Have our socket and our bolt. Okay, so I am going to disconnect this connector here. Got a lot more space created. There's a blue connector right here. Just gonna pinch and pull that one off. Now we got a ton of space here. All right, so we're on the home stretch, it looks like. I'm going to take this off. So there are two 12 millimeters right there. There's that bracket. I'll put these back in for now so I don't lose them. I want to take this bracket off, but the 12 that's right here is blocked by this other bracket. So I need to take this one off. That's a 10 millimeter. There's that bolt. I'll take this connector off of here. Like so. Okay, so there are two 12s here. I'm going to use a swivel socket. Jeez. Okay, and this one here. There we go. There's that one. 
It says FR for front. All right, I'm going to put these back in for now. I'll probably have to take them out at some point, but I just want to make sure I don't lose anything here. That's good. There. Okay, so I'm going to work on getting this off now. As you can see, it's like the box wrench is the only thing I can get in there. I'm going to use a double wrench trick because I think these are on pretty tight. Let's see if that works for us here. Make sure that's square on there. There we go. That's loose. Oh, that's really tight. So I got those two loose. Then we've got one more back here. Got a swivel socket this time. Hopefully that'll work. There we go. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to spin these all out, hopefully, now. All right, I'm going to work on the rear now. You're not going to see quite as much as you could on this side, so I'm going to do my best here. But um, we've got one right here. We've got one here, one up here, and then one down underneath here where my middle finger is. So I guess I'll go through the offset wrench, see if that works for us. It's a little longer. There we go, that's better. Nope, not liking the way that feels. I do not want to strip that. Yeah, that offset is a little loose. There we go. Whoa. Yeah, I would recommend if you are working on cars and you're kind of new at this, tool you're using doesn't feel like it fits correctly, stop right away. I have done that many times where I continue on and end up stripping a fastener and then I'm spending a couple hours trying to get it off. Okay, there we go. All right, let's get this last one off here. Double rinse trick again. Nice and flush on the head of the bolt. There we go. Okay, there it is. Hope I don't drop this. There we go. So, this one's coming off now. Here we go take this off and sure enough there is one more fastener hiding back here there we go that's better you can see it's starting to move now so this one actually has looks like five the other one I think has four take that out there's one half and the other one. There we go. All right, so in order to get this off, it looks like I am going to have to remove, um, you see hopefully right here, small little vacuum hose right there. So I'm going to take that out. 10 millimeters. We'll see how that works for us. Another one here. Right there, this thing. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it, move it out of the way temporarily here.
I got coolant running all over the place somewhere down there. So I'm going to have to try to catch that. All right, so I'm going to quickly recap what I did, how I got this out. So on this end, there is an O-ring. And to get that out of there, it's basically almost like when you remove an axle. It's kind of the same kind of thing. You have to pop it over that the end of the uh, pipe there. I could tell that I was not going to be able to get this off without also getting this out because you can see right here, it's going to hit right here if I try to take this off by itself. So I just basically got a block of wood, put it behind this pipe like so, and with a rubber mallet, because I want to put too much force on that, I just tap that on the end and it popped out. Okay, so I'm going to take this hose off the water outlet. Slide that up. Break that loose. And then slide it off. Grab the paper towel just in case. It's pretty empty. I'm going to pull the whole thing out with the EGR on it and everything. As you can see there. And out it comes. All right, so I kind of screwed myself, and normally I would remember to do this early on, and that is to loosen this pulley bolt right here for the camshaft and also the one back there. I usually do that if I know I'm going to take the covers off. I do that before I take the timing belt off. So I don't take the bolt out. I just loosen it so I can get it off later without having to worry about this rotating at all. So we're going to do the best we can here. I've got my impact buried down in here. And I'm going to hopefully get this off. Okay, there's the front one. Looks like our camshaft stayed in place. There we go. Wow, there it is. I'll take the pulley off now. Let me check to make sure that it didn't move. I don't think it did. Looks like it stayed where it was. There's the pulley. Okay, so I'm going to remove the rear cover here. There are two bolts, 12 millimeters. take the cover out. There it is. Alright, so I don't know how well you can see this, but one thing I wanted to get out before I work on this rear cylinder head is I need to remove that rod we put in earlier, the one from the, uh, the battery holder. So I'm going to turn that, see, right, left, going back that way. And I'll just take this out of here. There we go. Golly. There it is. All right, so it appears, and I'm pretty certain about this, that you can pull the cylinder heads off with the cam gear. So I wanted to get this off because there's a bracket underneath here, and I'll show that in a bit. There's a bracket that has a couple wires clipped to it. So I wanted to get that bracket off so I have a nice clear exit for the cylinder head. So I was fishing through my drawer and I found a spanner wrench this one here and what I did put this down in there like this put my hands in there right underneath here so I got the spanner wrench in like that and then as I turn the bolt to loosen it turn it counterclockwise the spanner wrench hit up against the engine mount so it was wedged there and then I could just use a breaker bar and get this off the rest of the way so this bolt is really tight so no wonder I was having trouble getting it off. Okay, bolt is out. All right, so I am faced with another challenge now, and that is to get the cam gear off. It is on there. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm using a screwdriver. I'm just kind of wedging it between the cover and the gear. Just kind of wiggling a little bit, taking my time. 
because the last thing I want to have happen is for this rear cover to snap. So. I hear it popping every once in a while. And that means that it's basically sliding this way. Okay, I think it's ready to come off now. And there it is. All right, so I'm going for the cam cover bolts right here. Those are 12 millimeters, and once again, a cover. Okay, so this bracket that was on the back of the cylinder head, I thought I had to unclip all this stuff here in order for us to get this whole wire harness to lay forward and get the cylinder head out. So this is for the uh, sensor below. I just had to take this out. So there it is. Alright, so we're ready to remove the cylinder heads. So we're going to start with the front now there is a sequence of removing the bolts. There are eight of those bolts, by the way. And so I'll post that sequence. You need a 12.14 millimeter socket. So get one that fits pretty well. This one's okay. And you may need a breaker bar also. So I'm gonna try this one, this breaker bar. Also the bolts should be loosened in one third turn increments. That is really tight. Okay, so for demonstration purposes, I am going to pull the head and the cat off together because I think that's probably how most people are going to do it. 
If I have any trouble getting the head and cat out at the same time, I am going to go back to pulling just the cat off by itself and then pull the head off after that. So we'll start with number one up here. I've got the breaker bar kind of in close. This one's got a little swiveling head on it, so that's kind of nice. I'm going to start in close and push away from myself. And the good thing is it's a 12-point socket, so you've got a lot of maneuverability with it. Alright, so we are going to attempt to get this out. I know we're going to have some mess down there, so I have a pan on the floor, one of those big metal pans. And I also have bungeed this out of the way. This is the power steering line. As I can see, it's going to get caught right there on the camshaft. All the wiring is back. Move that out of the way. I think we are good now. So let's give this a shot, see how it goes. There is a bracket below that I'm a little worried about. I can't remember if I took that off or not, but that's for the catalytic converter wiring. So we'll see. There we go, that's off. It's off on this side. Okay, so I was able to unhook that bracket. It got caught on something down there on its way out. I was afraid of that one. So let's pull this out now. Alright, so there you have it. We finally made it to the end. We finally got the cylinder heads off the engine block. 
So what I do next is take a little bit of a closer look at the cylinder heads and the engine block and try to figure out what exactly happened here. We'll take things apart, clean things up, and put everything back together. So hopefully this information was helpful, and thanks for watching.